I just want to start by asking, um, you've both been, well, Max, you've been with the project since the beginning and Bradley, you've been with it for a few years now. And I wonder if you could have imagined that it would become more and more relevant with time. And also um, it's one of the few pieces of art or entertainment that is actually taking on and tackling bodily autonomy and reproductive freedom. And I wonder what it means to you to be a part of a project that is so important. And I will go to you first, Max. Um, of course, I mean, listen, when when um, we started making the show, it was before the election. Um, so it was a, a genuine shock to all of us how prescient um, the material became. I, I initially was just responding to a narrative that I thought was really compelling as a piece of fantasy. Um, mm -hmm. Then it became less fantastical. Uh, at the same time, that was not that was not where the prediction started. It started in 1985 with Margaret's, you know, original text. Um, she was so far ahead of the game in terms of recognizing, you know, patterns in human behavior and um, this sort of slip and slide thing that happens with, over, 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 like historically, you can look at these, the, this is a consistent thing. Right, mm -hmm. this kind of flip flop between our moral ideas, and it's, it used to be anyway. Observing as a British person from afar, that you'd have a you'd have a democratic president, you'd have a Republican president, you'd have a democratic president, a Republican president. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly, right. It's this constant <laughs> shift and pull. I'm, I've been a little devastated by how extreme the polarity has become. Yeah, thank you, and. And for you, Bradley, as someone who came in uh, a few seasons in, uh, what does it mean to you to be a part of this project? Uh, you know, uh, it, it uh, on so many levels, uh, it means a lot to me. It's an extraordinary creative experience, but what you're talking about, um, you know, it's really harrowing. It was plenty relevant enough yeah. when I read it in 1985, um, uh, it was rele relevant enough uh, season one, um, and it is absolutely a uh, cautionary tale about how, you know, white nationalism with uh, uh, misogyny at its reptilian brainstem uh, being uh, weaponized by religious wackos who are actually the total inversion mm -hmm. of any sane human being's interpretation of the values of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, uh, it's terrifying. I, I get a little scared. Uh, yeah, this, like we're doing a TV show about a book that is banned in yeah. many states, mm -hmm. just got banned by the party of freedom. Right. Um, uh, uh, what is, uh, you know, happening, uh, the targeting, the scapegoating of uh, a non, uh, to what to a lot of people are non-normative, you know, gender or sexual, you know, it's right out of, I always think of the documentary um, that when you see the uh, Nazis burning books, that's at Magnus Hirschfeld's clinic in, uh, in, in Germany, where the first guy to make the distinction between gender and, and, and sexuality, to understand that trans human beings existed, and they're being targeted. The same people are being targeted. Uh, so yeah, it's an extraordinary time. Yeah. Um, and a TV show is not enough, you know? Right. It's not. Uh, well, I, I appreciate that you went into that because I am with LGBTQ plus media, so I'm, I'm glad that you uh, touched on that. Uh, Max, I, I don't have a lot of time. I want to just uh, ask you uh, regarding this season. Uh, I'm finding Nick incredibly hard to read. Uh, I'm not sure how much of his motivation is political and how much is driven toward, uh, you know, wanting to reunite with June or Nicole, or I, I wonder if you could shed a little light on what you think his motivation is. And also his relationship with Commander Lawrence is fascinating. Um, so I wonder if you could shed a little light on that for me. Well, I'll just say my, my, one of my favorite things about the show of all, all of the characters is 
uh, it's not simplistic and the show's never didactic. It never tells you what to think, really. It's, okay. it's allowing the audience to participate. And um, that's my favorite kind of fiction. Um, so I, I fully embrace that. And maybe that's off-putting to some people that I, I really do enjoy the ambiguity of this person. Um, I think he's I think he's somebody who wasn't fully formed when he came into Gilead and and maybe doesn't know anything else. So he is trying always, I think, to find um, his moral compass. I do believe that he's somebody who wants to be a good person. Um, I'm see somebody I, I, I absolutely empathize with, but I don't think he really has the tools or necessarily the intellect to know how to do that all the time. Great. Well, thank you for that. And uh, unfortunately, I, I have to wrap, but I, I want to thank you for this and uh, for the season. It's, a, it's another great one. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Tracy. you.